From the center of the universe, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, this is the SDM Show with your host, Rob Cairns. The SDM Show focuses on business, life, productivity, digital marketing, WordPress, and more. Sit back, relax, grab your favorite drink, and enjoy the show. Here is Rob. Hey, everybody, Rob Cairns here. I'm the founder, CEO, and chief creator of Amazing Ideas at Stunning Digital Marketing. In this podcast, I have Mark Benzikin with me, and we're going to talk about WordPress governance, amongst other things. Sit back, relax, enjoy the show. This podcast is sponsored by Stunning Digital Marketing, the agency that can help protect your WordPress website today. Go to stunningdigitalmarketing.com and see what we can do to help you Protect your business investment. That's stunningdigitalmarketing.com. Hey, everybody. Rob Cairns here. And today I've got my guest, Mark Benzikin, with me today. How are you today, Mark? I'm doing really well. Thank you. How are you? Not too bad. Doing better. We were going to hook up at uh, WordCamp Canada, and that didn't quite happen. And you no. po- you posted a tweet saying you wish you had met me. And I said to you, well, let's do the next best thing. Let's jump on a virtual call, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and that was pretty cool. It was it was nice to actually meet you. I, I've known who you are for a long time, but uh I don't think we've ever been in the same circle at the same time. So uh, it was it was a disappointment. You missed a really good time. WordCamp Canada was fantastic. Those organizers did a very lot with a very little. I can't believe what they did. So, uh, yeah. So I hear, I, and I love Ottawa as a city, so I want to send my kudos out to the organizers. Sorry, guys, but health reasons get in the way sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Just, uh, but Ottawa, I've got family in Ottawa. Ottawa is one of my favorite places, so... God willing, I'll be in Ottawa in uh, September. So there you go. Um, I thought you've been around the WordPress space for a long time. You do some work with Main WP. Mm-hmm. You do some uh, dev work. You know the community well. And I thought I'd ask you, how'd you get involved in WordPress? Like, what's your origin story? Uh, I think, like many people, it was an accident. It was purely accidental. I uh, actually was liquidating Harley Davidson motorcycle parts on eBay. Mm. And, uh, and, uh, I had kind of, I had been, I've, I've always had a technology background, but, uh, I was kind of stepping away and, and while Harley was not my first thing, uh, you know, we were doing pretty well at it, but then Harley changed their fees. And I, I woke up one day and I said, you know, why am I going through all the, the heartache and, and brain damage of like buying these parts, having to identify them, because I mean, we were getting parts all the way from World War II era and having to identify them and say what they would fit and whatnot was very time consuming. And then the shipping and the costs and and, and warehousing. And I, I just like, like I do usually at three o'clock in the morning, have this epiphany. I'm like, why am I bothering to do all this when I can make money off of my competitors with the eBay affiliate program? <laughs> and so I thought, well, maybe I can just build a website that brings in an eBay feed and I just put in keywords and, uh, and it'll bring in the feed for what I want. And then I'll just, and it'll have my affiliate link in there. And, um, and I thought about it. I'm like, yeah, I can program this from the ground up. And so I was, I was starting to poke around and I found this plugin for $49 that was already built to do it in WordPress. And that was my you know i like everybody else i thought well wordpress is just blogging software and then i saw this plugin and i'm like well i don't care if it's just blogging software and it will do this then i'll then i'll throw this in there so for 49 bucks i i you know this is like 2009 i think 2010 somewhere in there and uh and i threw this plugin i i i had a server uh there uh that i had built uh, and I I had never touched WordPress. I did the five minute install. I got a, a WordPress site up and running. I had it figured out inside of an hour, and I had my inside of two hours. I actually had my site running that was just bringing in the eBay feed exactly how I wanted it. And I didn't care about how it looked because uh, I was just wanting to make you know uh, get referrals off of uh, Google, which at the time did not have the 
the the algorithms that it does now that kind of prevent that kind of thing from happening so uh, i was able to get up on the search engines i was able to do everything and within a month i was actually making more money off of affiliate dollars without lifting a finger uh than uh, than i was doing all the by the time i considered ebay fees and the time it takes to catalog and and identify and warehouse all these parts and I was like, I'm just going to do this. And then I looked at WordPress deeper and deeper. I said, there's a lot more to WordPress than this. And then I called the, uh, you know, Greg Franklin and I have a longstanding relationship and, and uh, he, uh, he now works with Groundhog, but, um, but uh, Greg and I go back to circuit city days, which is where we met back in the eighties. And we had had partnerships and things like that. And I, you know, Greg and I are really good friends. And I called Greg. I said, Hey, have you looked at WordPress? You know, I hadn't talked to Greg in a couple months and he's like, Oh, I'm doing WordPress right now too. And so uh, he said, you need to come out and go to a word camp in San Diego, which uh, so I, he said, I'll pay for your WordCamp ticket if you if you pay for the plane ticket. Well, I'm thinking that it's a conference, and so it was going to be costly. So I thought, okay, that's probably equal. I didn't realize that back then tickets were like 25 bucks or something like that to get into work. But then I discovered the community, and that's kind of what hooked me into like WordPress as as more than just a piece of software that was a means to an end uh, to what I wanted. So that's, that's the long version of a, kind of a – you know, short story, I guess. It, it's funny, you mentioned the community and a lot of us see that. A lot of us know the, a lot of people that go way back in the community. Like I, I was thinking, you know, of people I know in the community and some of these people go back 10 and I've been in the community over 15 years. So I've been in a long mm -hmm. time as well. Yeah. I, some people go back like 15, 16, 17 years. Um, last week I had a, a catch up with my good friend Bob Dunn in Portugal, mm -hmm. and Bob mm -hmm. and I were saying, surmising we've known each other about seventeen years now, and it's, wow, it's, there's yeah. a lot of that in the community. There's a lot of long time people in the community. I think yeah. the hard part is the people in that community are actually the minority of people in WordPress. So by that I mean, WordPress powers about forty percent of the internet give or take 45 percent, depending on who yeah. you listen to yeah. um the the vocal community is that community of devs designers people in the know on either x or linkedin i would say or mm -hmm. facebook in some groups i would say that vocal group probably accounts for probably one to two percent maybe mm -hmm. yeah yeah but yeah i they're the ones that seem to make all the noise, right? So Yeah. Yeah. No, I I agree. And um and I think that that is something that we those of us who are vocal and active yeah. and and connected, uh and and kind of um I don't know that I'd say we're the engine, but we're at least a transmission, you know, that drives WordPress. Oh, yeah, um WordPress. and um and we need to keep in mind that out of that 43% or 44% or, you know, yes. whatever it is, not only are we the minority, but we have to keep in mind that the rest of those people may not even know that they're on WordPress, <laughs> you know, or, or That's something cool. like that. And, and, uh, and it's really easy, especially, I think anytime that you're in a community of people, whether it's your community of wealthy people or a community of people who have a passion for any one thing, if you only surround yourself with those people, you start to believe that that's what the whole world is. And yes. the reality is you're still just within a bubble. And unless you make an active effort to reach outside of your bubble and, and step outside of that, um, you you brainwash yourself into believing that this is the way that things are, and and I think, um, and I know we're going to get into this a little bit, but I think that that is one of the issues that we have with with WordPress is we are kind of unaware. Those of us who are vocal are probably a little bit unaware of of uh, how we are seen optically from outside of our bubble, and yeah. and. 
and that's a big problem and and one that we need to i think that we need to focus harder on um it's not just a matter of whether or not our software is easy to use or whether or not it's sexy it's a matter of the public image that we that we put out there about what wordpress is as well if people are still after 20 years are still saying it's just blogging software it means we've done a really crappy job of putting out <laughs> the image of what wordpress is yeah it's like i've got this a uh, client who's a good friend of mine too. So we've known each other for oh, over 25 years. They run a jewelry store in the Toronto area, an independent. And they have a website, websites based on WordPress. What a shock. Mm -hmm. They have a new uh, store being launched in October. It's a Woo store. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you of their current website, they almost never log into that website. So mm -hmm. one of the problems we see, and you probably see this with your work, is no matter how many times I hear, oh, teach the client how to do stuff, the clients almost never do the stuff. So they, they don't. No. So they don't yeah. update their website. They don't do any of that. They they don't make quick changes. They won't even make quick hour changes. They just, and partially for that is, they're, frankly, they're busy concentrating on running their businesses. They don't yeah. have time to do yeah. that, right? Yeah. So. Absolutely. There's there's a reason that a doctor is a doctor and they're not a technologist. They're not interested in being a technologist. There's a reason I'm a technologist and not a doctor. I'm interested in technology. I'm not interested in being a doctor. I'm not, you know, I'll go to a doctor and a doctor will say, oh, you can do this and this and this, right? Which is the basics. Like here's a here's a pill or here's some lifestyle changes you can make, but you still have to go to the doctor, yeah. you know? And, so and teaching people how to maintain their own websites when they have zero desire. I mean, we're not even talking about a 1% desire. We're talking zero desire with a lot of these people we're trying to force we're trying to force feed them and that's because we uh project i think i think we're really good at projecting that whole why wouldn't you want to do it you know because we would want to do it but the reality is most people aren't that way they like to focus on one thing one thing only they're good at that one thing and it may not be what we do and that's why they hired us in the first place i have I have a, a couple of clients. I mean, I don't do a lot of client work, but one of my clients is a is a a um a gym uh in Milwaukee. And you know, I at the beginning I made that same mistake. I said, let me teach you how to write your own blog post. Let me teach you. And like you said, ask me how many times he's logged into the site. Yeah. You know. Um, and this man has administrative privileges and he has not even logged in once. I mean, he could go in and blow his site up. He has zero desire. He's he's just like, just do what I need to do to drive traffic to my my gym because my gym is what, what my issue is. They don't care. That's true. Yeah. So you were just recently at WordCamp uh, Canada, which I was, was in Ottawa, our nation's capital. Mm -hmm. I didn't get Correct. there, unfortunately. Um, I have to ask, you said they did a great job. What do you think of the city itself? You know, I didn't get to see a lot of the city. Um, I did get to go to Parliament Hill. I love architecture. I thought it was amazing. I liked uh, my rides uh, in the Ubers where I saw how green everything was. And, and I thought, man, this is a this is a gorgeous place to live. I do realize that winters are different. I'm from Wisconsin. I know that we, I know that winters yeah, yeah. and summers can look completely different. But uh, the time and what I saw, I really, really enjoyed. I probably could have spent uh, <clears throat> if I had had my professional camera equipment with me, I probably could have spent two days walking around Parliament Hill just just getting pictures of the architecture. I love architecture and and. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, I I did enjoy it. And and the people uh, I was with uh, Dennis, uh, who's the founder of Main WP, and we were we went out to dinner and Dennis says, you know, one of the things that I've noticed here is nobody honks their horn. Yeah. And and I hadn't noticed it until then. And we actually witnessed a couple situations where we were like, if that situation happened back home, people would be honking at each other, not the only time we heard a horn honk was when someone set their alarm on their car. And we thought, 
that's just crazy that that people are that patient and and you know there's a world out there of people that are patient and kind and understanding and and think in terms of you know what i make mistakes when i drive too so i'd be a hypocrite to honk i don't know what's going on but it sure seemed like people were so they really that that reputation of canadians being nice and i know that as long as you're not talking about hockey you know i think in general canadians are pretty nice yeah. but, um but just witnessing it firsthand and like we're talking about the capital city of of canada so it's you know a good sized city and all the things that I'm used to seeing in American cities, the impatience and the, and the, and, and all of those things, I just didn't see it there. And I just felt, even though there was a lot, there were a lot of people around everything, I felt calm the whole time as a result of this. And it was very yeah. nice. Yeah, that's good. Um, so you did work Camp Canada and you did a talk. And I did. I did do a talk. I kind of want to jump in that talk and, Part of the reason I want to jump in that is I think it's been really important what you talked about, number one, mm -hmm. and we'll get to talk in a moment. And number two, there's because of the topic, there seems seems to be some resistance to getting this talk up on WordPress TV. So that is the rumor that I have heard. So let's um, jump let's jump into what was your talk and what did you talk about or what was the preface of it um let me see if i can remember everything it's been a week and i have a short memory but um yeah. it's been actually two weeks now i guess um so the talk was called the problem with a parenthetical s so the problems with wordpress yeah. um and um the idea was that i would uh consult with the community so actually on the on the title slide in the byline it actually says you know presentation by mark benzacane and the wordpress community because i actually uh reached out to members of the wordpress community and once again it's that you know obviously that vocal group that that we yep. were talking about um and i said you know what do you see as problems with wordpress you know and i wasn't just talking about the software i'm talking about wordpress as a whole because as we've talked about there's more to it than just the software it's software it's community it's leadership it's uh public image um and uh there was a fifth thing and i can't remember what it is uh, <laughs> but it but and and so my goal was to talk about all of these things and um but not from the point of view of here is my opinion of what's wrong with WordPress, but from the point of view of of this is what the community, what we, you know, what people I have pulled and spoken to think of. And uh, it was really, um, some of it was eye opening and some of it wasn't. Um, and, uh, but it was, it was, uh, that's what it was. And so um, as a result, uh, I think uh, I I can't speak to exactly w why they uh, why there's a discussion about whether or not it should go up on WordPress TV. Uh, other than I'm I might have ruffled a feather or two because I was very frank and I and uh, and honest because I look at it as you know let's just use a metaphor of of it being code. Let's just say that WordPress. All, all five things that I've encompassed, let's say that they're a big piece of code, okay? When when you're a coder, you either fix the code or you deprecate the code or the software doesn't work at some point in time. You can leave the code in and it may work mostly, it may work mostly, but at some point in time, it's gonna break. And so in my opinion, if you look at WordPress as an ecosystem, as a piece of code, if we don't look at these issues that we face, it doesn't mean that by and large, WordPress isn't great. WordPress is fantastic. But if we don't look at these pieces of code within the ecosystem that are that are broken or need some attention, then eventually the ecosystem is going to break. And, and so I felt 
you know, uh, compelled, especially after reaching out to the community and everything to get up and, and talk frankly about what the issues were that we had. And, and that might, that might not have sat, it might not, you know, not sit well with, with, um, you know, with some people, but, um, but it's, it, it was not from, uh, None of it was a from a position of maliciousness or anything. It was these are issues that need to be addressed, and hopefully we can fix it. And and I, you know, the reality is, there was enough there for a two hour presentation, and so I didn't get to discuss the solutions. And and by the way, the solutions were me operating in a vacuum. So I proposed solutions at the end of the presentation to the problems. However those were me operating in a vacuum. Those were me saying, these are potential solutions that I see, but it's really, solutions are always, this is a place to start the discussion. And then when you, when you come up with solutions, that's a discussion that everybody has to have and everybody has to get involved in. And it's not something that you can do in a, you know, 50 minute or one hour presentation. But hopefully I gave people enough things to think about that they could start talking about solutions, better solutions than I came up with and 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 something to to make the whole world better. And when I talk about the community, I'm talking about everybody. Uh, you know, one of the things is is and, I, and I'll just say it because it's kind of the elephant in the room. A lot of people come down hard on Matt. OK, uh, because he's leadership and he is that central point. And there are some issues there. But one thing we have to remember as the community is Matt is still part of the community. And and so we don't want to really ostracize him, but but at the same time, Matt needs to be open to uh people saying, Hey, we don't like that you're doing this. And and he has to be open to that because the reality is this community really kind of can't survive without Matt. And and in a way, Matt WordPress kind of can't survive without the community. So we need, you know, it's it's very symbiotic. And right now, I, I, you know, my observation and the feedback that I got from a lot of people is that symbiosis isn't working and we need to make adjustments in order to bring it back into harmony. I would agree with you. I think since we're talking about leadership and I wanted to go here anyway, um, one of the things I believe for a long, long time, and I'm not a Matt detractor. I think he's mm -hmm. done a really good job. I don't think our community overall, I don't think our community would be where it is if it <laughs> weren't for his leadership. So mm -hmm. I have to be fair. Mm -hmm. But I also think running a for-profit company and running a non-profit company, they should be run under separate umbrellas with separate executive directors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really believe that. I do think there's a conflict there. I agree. I do. I do. And I yeah. think where we're seeing some of this as well in the tech space is with a company called OpenAI. And everybody mm -hmm. knows who OpenAI is now, Chat right. GPT. And if you know the structure of OpenAI, they have a nonprofit board that basically um, supports uh, a CEO who was ousted. And that CEO's job is to make money. What a conflict. So the minute mm -hmm. you start tying profit and nonprofits together, and I, years ago, I did a contract with a guy for his for-profit side of the business, and he had a nonprofit side. Mm -hmm. And I actually refused to do any work for the nonprofit company, even though I was working for the for-profit company. I just mm -hmm. outright refused mm -hmm. because I, it was a conflict. And I think it's time for WordPress governance to sit down and cut and break the two apart. What do you mm -hmm. think about that? Um, <clears throat> I I agree with it in concept. Mm -hmm. Um, and we and you bring up this word governance, and and the thing is, the thing about governance, and and I think Morton probably discovered this, you know, <laughs> firsthand. Uh, but um, the thing about governance is, governance has to have some teeth. It has to have bite. In order to be effective, and and that's probably a strong term because I am all for peaceful solutions uh, to things. But but you know when you talk about government governance, you're talking about oversight. You're talking about um, you know somebody coming in and saying, "Look, this is a violation," or "This is you know," and and you're talking about regulating something. And 
the issue that we have, and this is purely practical, it has nothing to do with the person who has all the keys to the kingdom, but on a practical on paper, if you took all the names out of it and you said, here's the org chart, yeah. and this person here has every single key and all the real estate, okay, how do you govern that? And and the and the reality is the practical reality is that person in that square on the on the org chart has to be willing to give some of that up in order for governance to exist. Mm -hmm. And and so I agree with you. I kind of look at it as like, okay, if you when you you're right that there is this conflict. You have a for profit and a non profit. <clears throat> If I'm a parent and I've got two children and one child gives me all the love and attention and everything that I need, right? So we'll call that the profit. And then we have the child who is kind of running on their own and doing their own thing and all that. As a parent, which one am I more likely to, you know, put my attention and to quote unquote like more i as a parent of many kids i don't like any of my kids more than others but there are times that one kid is more favorite than the other <laughs> and so it's the same sort of thing we've got this community that is nonprofit, and then we've got this this business that is generating billions and billions of dollars and creating billion, you know lots of jobs and all these things and, and don't get me wrong the community is creating jobs too but that that community is becoming more and more like that child that's running wild on its own and you know in a way if i were the person at the head i'd be putting my effort into the for-profit thing too because that for-profit is giving me what i need you know it's giving me the feedback it's i'm surrounding myself with people who are or who are telling me what I want to hear, maybe. I don't know. I'm not I'm not in any of that. I am very detached from that. But you, I have more control over that situation than the other. And so um, that may not be the best metaphor, but it's the best one that I can come up with because I'm a parent of a lot of kids and I know kind of how, you know, hey, for me, the kid who's coming up and wanting to sit on my lap and give me attention and things like that, those are the kids that I put my effort well, that I that that I get my dopamine, you know, from right, yeah. and so, so my I guess my suggestion here is maybe we as a community, the 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 nonprofit side, could be a little bit more. I know this sounds like I'm an apologist, but we could be a little bit more empathetic to the position our parent is at, but at the same time you know, maybe figure out ways to make him accountable or make leadership more accountable. And and once again, it goes back to that governance thing, but I don't know how you govern until the person in charge, the person with all the power is willing to give some of that up and say, you know what, this is for the betterment of all of us that I give some of this up. It's and, a, bit, a bit of an issue to say. Yeah, that. And yeah. I I think um, I think it's just a bad model doing it this way. Yeah. In a way. It, well, yeah. Like I said, on a purely piece of paper, take the names out of it. Um, most people would uh, most people would look at it and go, "This this can't work. This isn't sustainable." Yeah. I w I would think you know. And I think we have to do it to future proof the project and the future proof the software. I think that's mm -hmm. part of it. I mean, you know, Matt's still young. I think he's. Correct me if I'm wrong. He's in his 40s now, I mm -hmm, believe. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. But the point is, what's going to happen in 10 years or 15 years? I think we need to work on how we we future proof this down the road too. And yeah. I think it's really important. Um, as well in the community, since we're on the subject, because mm -hmm. this is all about community. One of the things that's kind of I think really split this community up in the last couple of years is the whole blocks full site editing Gutenberg project. I think mm -hmm. it really helps uh, with the people in the know. Mm -hmm. And I think what we got to realize is there's multiple ways of doing WordPress. And mm -hmm. Sam Brockway over at uh, now Sam Munoz over at WP Engine has a really good saying saying do WordPress your way. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And I really believe that. So mm -hmm. if you want to do Gutenberg and blocks and full site editing, go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. If you want to work with a classic theme, go ahead and do it. And mm -hmm. there's some features in 6.6 that actually benefit classic themes. Like some of the styles, if you turn them on, apply to classic themes mm -hmm. now. So that's, yeah, really, yeah. that's really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, if you want to do headless, go ahead and do it. If you want to write code, go ahead and do it. But I believe as, as a community, we need to stop fighting about what our choices are and ripping somebody up for their choices. Uh, do you have any right. thoughts on that whole mess? Um, uh, yes, I, I, I do. I think that, you know, it, 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 to me, it's the same as if you tell me you like Taylor Swift, it's not my position to tell you you can't like Taylor Swift. You know, like the music that you like, like the way you do. And and when I was doing server press and even now with main WP, I tell people the same thing. I say, do workflow your way. Yep. Okay. It's, it's your life. It's your lifestyle. It's the way you think. We all think differently. And it's what works for you. You know, now I also like encourage people to be open minded and say, hey, if somebody shows you another way that can benefit you, be open to it. But mm -hmm. no one says your way is wrong. And once again, going back to the original thing we talked about, which is the people out there on WordPress don't even know they're on WordPress. They don't give a crap if you're using full site editor, or Gutenberg or classic editor or whatever. They don't care if you're using 2016 theme. If you know, was that a theme? I can't even remember now. But anyway, they don't care what theme you're using. They don't care if you're using Genesis framework. They don't care about any of that stuff. All they care about is does my site run? Am I getting visitors? That's what they care about. And so all this infighting, you know, and, and and I understand that the concern is if we have people over here working on this and people over here working on this and people over here working on this, then it spreads us too thin. And mm -hmm. and and I understand that argument and, and it's, you know, probably a, a valid argument. But are we going to sit around and argue all day about which one is best? Or are we just, go, you know, when we could put that that bandwidth into you know just making whatever our focus is better i i'd rather spend my time working on whatever i'm doing and making it better mm -hmm. than arguing back and forth about opinions which is all these are these are just opinions and the reality is are we making it in my opinion and this is me offering my opinion as i said we're just talking opinions but in my opinion are we making this a viable product for the future that people will continue to want to use. That's all that matters. Yeah. And I think the advantage of open source software is to make it open so you can do what you want to do and how you want to do it. And I think right. that's really important. Yeah. And I think that's what people are missing. The other thing I think people are missing going back to this whole community group is as a group we sell ourselves short we undervalue what we offer we undervalue our products mm -hmm. we undervalue what we charge mm -hmm. i will tell you i am as a digital concierge i do not brand myself as an agency i am not on the low end and people say excuse me I wouldn't charge that. Well, that's nice because why do we keep fighting in our community this race to the bottom? Um, Robert Bloom wrote a really good book called The Inside Advantage in late uh, 2000s. Mm -hmm. And he said, don't fight the race to the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Unless yeah. you're a dollar store chain, by the way. Yeah. yeah. You know, and he said, um, make your business different and make you stand out. Why do people in the WordPress community not get that and to add to that and you'll get what i'm gonna say because you have a marketing background they don't do a good job of marketing their own products right right so obviously when you market your own products it's a matter of creating value um but i think that i think that this is all uh kind of a, a byproduct of us being in this bubble um 
this this okay first of all we all got into wordpress and it was free okay so it didn't cost us anything and um there's there's an old uh story that uh one of my old business partners told me years and years ago and and it stuck with me and this has to do with how you you know how you create value for yourself but you have to believe that that value is there well if i have a natural inclination to te with technical things you can give me almost anything technical and if i know nothing about it right now within an hour i'll have it figured out because i understand how things work and because i have 40 years of experience in technology and and i can put the pieces together and and make something work um i my natural inclination is I take that knowledge for granted. So because I take it for granted, it's not that valuable. But the reality is, if I sit down and think of it, I have over 40 years of experience that no one else has. And yes. that's where the value is. And so the, the story that I was alluding to was this man is running a factory. And there's different variations of the story. But the one that I heard is... This man is is running a factory, and one day the factory goes down. Like it's building widgets; it doesn't really matter what it's producing. But all of a sudden, this this big machine goes down. He calls a guy in. The guy comes in, looks at it for five minutes, pulls out a screwdriver, turns a screw, and <laughs> and and fixes it. And the owner of the factory says, "That's great. Give me a bill." And he gives him a bill for ten thousand dollars. And and the owner of the factory says, ten thousand dollars, but you only spent a minute on it." And he says, can you itemize why it costs $10,000? And so he writes on the bill. And what the bill says is, turn screw, $1, knowing which screw to, to turn, $9,999. Absolutely. And, right. and that's where I think this race to the bottom is, is we, we do want to provide value to our customers. But what we don't realize is that the value we're providing is intellectual value. It is not... It is not, you know, a value of, you know, an item. It is not tangible. Oh, and, cool. and and as a result, we tend to undervalue ourselves because we've taken that knowledge that we've gained because it was our passion and because we like it and because we have an inclination for it and all these things. We take it so for granted because for us, it was all in the fun of learning it. But we don't realize that that fun and that passion and all those things are what turns into value to a person who doesn't have fun doing that, who doesn't want to do all that, but recognizes the need for it. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why I don't call my business an agency anymore. Mm -hmm. I call it a concierge because mm -hmm. what a concierge does is it takes all these pieces and puts them all together. And the mm -hmm. problem is most people, most small business owners have no clue what piece goes here, what piece goes here, right. what in the middle right right and they and they don't realize and people always say to me why are you so pricey and i said because i have expertise that mm -hmm. a student coming out of school at call it 20 dollars an hour doesn't have right right exactly exactly um yeah. as we move forward in wordpress you know coming out of your talk and mm -hmm. coming out of how you feel because i think you've really hit the right notes here um what are like three or four quick takeaways that you would you would say to the community if you had a chance? If I had a chance, three or four takeaways. Mm, can you be more specific? <laughs> uh, about about how you feel about the community, how you feel about where we're going, how you feel about where WordPress is mm. at, um, I, what uh, we need to do. Yeah. So I I feel like um. I feel like there's a tremendous amount of uh, kind of renewed passion within the community, yep. uh, which is exciting. I, for one, am a person that is kind of renewing. When I when we closed down ServerPress, of course, I had to deal with all the emotional uh, baggage that goes along with with shuttering a business you've been running and putting your heart and soul into for ten years. And I stepped out of WordPress altogether, and um, and I I had reached a little bit of burnout, which you'll hear a lot of people talk about. Um, and I'm starting to see a lot of uh, a lot of us who 
uh, have been in the community for a long time who may have kind of reached that point of disillusionment and frustration and all these things, you're starting to see a little bit more energy there. Um, what I would say to those of us who are um, finding a spark of energy that we that we thought was gone or something like that is find new people to bring into the community. Because if you look at if you look at any movement that goes in the right direction, you know, whether it's civil rights or whatever, you may have had older people that kind of started the movement, but it was the younger people that energized the movement. And there's a there's a lot of reasons for that. One is I'm at an age where I just don't have that much energy. I don't have that kind of energy anymore, that kind of you know, vibrance and all of that. And the other thing is bringing new people in means fresh ideas. It means fresh passions. It means fresh everything. Mm -hmm. And it's upon us. If we really do want the WordPress community to sustain and grow and continue, it's up to us that have been around to bring people in that, that might be looking for a community and they just don't know what it is or whatever. And it's up to us to mentor them and to onboard them and to, and to make, you know, make, uh, get younger people to say, why not WordPress, you know, and, you know, and, uh, and all of those things. So, um, so I, I would say that my big takeaway is for us as a community, if we really want to remain strong, I agree, stop with the fighting. And let's focus on what it takes to grow a community and and build each other up and realize that, yes, the community has evolved, okay? And WordPress has evolved to where you've got the big money and you've got the, you know, the people who are struggling to make it and everything in between. But, but that's still all part of the community. And so let's work on on figuring out ways to integrate all aspects of that and include all of that. Because one of the things that has been preached in WordPress since day one is inclusiveness. Well, that includes the haves and the have nots. That includes, that includes, you know, uh, the marginalized communities that includes everything. And, yeah. and, and so, you know, that includes young people, old people, all of us. It is really cool that you know, I'm on the higher end of the age scale of people in technology at this point, and yet I get to go to you know, to events where people half my age actually want to talk to me. You know, that's actually kind of cool, and I feel like they have something to say every bit as much as I have something to say. And so, um, we're very fortunate to have this kind of environment. And I think that that's the thing that some of us who have been around are trying to hold on to and trying to foster to make it, you know, bigger and better. Yeah, that, that is so well said. Hey, Mark, if somebody wants to get a hold of you to talk about this or your talk or anything mm -hmm. else, mm -hmm. where's the best way and how? Um, you can reach me on Twitter. I'm Mark Benzak on Twitter. I am uh, Mark Benzakane on LinkedIn. You can find me on Facebook. Uh, I do work with Main WP with uh, with the group there, and uh, um, you know Main WP is a great product and and very supportive. I you know I just want to say this, and I'm I'm not really you know here to pitch a product, but what I do want to do is is I want to thank Dennis in particular because he supported me going to WordCamp Canada. He did not know what I was going to talk about. He did not make me submit my presentation to him first. He said, I'm sponsoring you to go to Canada and you talk about what you need to talk about. And I really appreciate that he, that he gave me the, um, you know, the license to, to talk about something that I do feel is, is very important and needs to be spoken about. So, yeah. and what um, I'll tell you is from my knowing and knowing Dennis, as well as I do, he's a pretty supportive guy. I mm -hmm. mean, you guys are yeah. lucky. He, um, he's been on this show. It was funny when I did the show, the first thing he said to me is I'm not used to doing podcasts. Can I just mm -hmm. talk? And I said, yeah, yeah. that's all yeah. I want you to do. Yeah. And, and, uh, and he was great. So yeah. thanks yeah. Dennis. And, uh, and thank you, Mark. You have a wonderful day, my friend. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. This show is brought to you by stunningdigitalmarketing.com. 
your Toronto leader in digital marketing services. Not only do we protect your WordPress website, we can help you with your site, provide social media management for your business, or even do one-on-one -on -one consulting. To find out more, go to stunningdigitalmarketing.com. A very special thank you to Mark for joining me on this edition of the SDM Show. This podcast is dedicated to my late father, Bruce Cairns. Dad, I miss you very much. I love you, and I think about you every day. For more information about stunning digital marketing, your digital marketing experts, go to stunningdigitalmarketing.com or go to stunningdigitalmarketing.info to find out all the great places that Rob Cairns can be found on the web.